This video is brought to you by Helix Sleep. So a few years ago, some folks on my channel recommended to me a show called Poppy the Performer. It's a CGI kids anime from the early 2000s that apparently has quite the reputation. For what, I did not know. Nor did I look into it, cause I forgot. Until now, it is now abundantly clear to me why Poppy the Performer has such an insane reputation. Like, I'm talking about creepy pasta levels of notoriety. First off, like I said, this was a kids show. As in, it actually aired on television for children in Japan. Like, could you imagine that for American parents? Trying to find something for their little kids to watch? Flipping through channels on the TV. Oh, look, swiper, no swiping. <laughs> oh, look at that. Can we fix it? Yes, we can. Oh, oh, mommy, click on that. It's a cute bunny guy and it's wolf friend. <laughs> I wonder what kind of adventures they'll get. <laughs> this show is the definition of chaos. Pure, unapologetic chaos. Explosions, throwing knives, sword fights, burying corpses, drowning, decapitations, demons, blood, and guns. So many guns. Again, folks, a kid's show. Man, the Japanese get all the cool stuff. Also, this was all done with 3D computer animation from the early 2000s. Now, first impressions would lead you to believe that the show is low quality garbage. But on the contrary, it is high quality garbage. I mean, come on, it's obviously not Pixar level stuff, but it doesn't have to be. And you will find out why. I swear to you all right now, there's truly a lot more to this show than meets the eye. And I genuinely was not expecting the reaction I got from it. So, I am giving you all a fair warning right now. This is some next level insanity. So, brace yourselves. Cause Poppy will not hesitate for a moment to end you. And that, folks, is a guarantee. So who's behind the creation of Poppy the Performer? Well, that would be Ryuji Masuda. Actually, this was the first show he ever worked on, so he created perfection right out the gate. According to my sources, Ryuji was approached by Kid Station, the Japanese television channel that would air Poppy, and was told by the network that they had a five-minute time slot, and offered Ryuji the spot with a generous budget of, get this, 100,000 yen a month, which equates to around 1,000 American dollars. Now, Ryuji was determined to create a 3D animated show, despite the technology being somewhat limited around this time with only a team of three people, a $1,000 budget, and three months to work on the project, Ryuji and his team made it work and took their limitations and used them to their advantage. Use simple lighting, assets, backgrounds. This actually reminds me a lot of Phil Vischer and VeggieTales and how he too had to get creative with the limitations of his characters in order to operate under such a tight budget. Like it's the exact same case here with Poppy. And according to Ryuji in an interview, the executives at Kid Station never objected to the dark humor of Poppy the Performer. Apparently, Ryuji was never told to make a show for children. He was just told, hey, make a show, and guess what? Everybody loved it! The TV network, the Japanese children, their parents, just everybody. There's even a bunch of merch for the show. Now, there was one episode that was banned because it was too violent. And then there's another one that never aired due to concerns that kids might try to imitate Poppy. But the rest of the show aired uninterrupted and was even picked up for a second and third season. After 39 episodes and a special, Poppy was completed. And Ryuji said, well, that's the end of that. I have nothing more to add to this. And then the show passed into legend ever since. So, what's the show about? Well, truth be told, the plot is quite simple. Poppy is a circus performer, and he and his assistants, Kitamono and Pappy, get into all kinds of hijinks and destroy one another. The episodes typically start off with one of the main characters doing something like a circus trick or whatever, but then it all goes horribly wrong. Poppy is a clown with anger issues. Every morning, he wakes up and chooses violence. You annoy Poppy, you die. You make Poppy jealous, you die. 
You breathe in front of Poppy, you die. And who is the poor soul that has to suffer this onslaught of violence? That would be Kitamono, the wolf assistant of Poppy. Kitamono, whose name I'm probably saying wrong, Kitamono. is mostly sweet and considerate and tries to stay out of Poppy's madness. But he too can be a bit of a jokester and also have a mean streak, especially if you stand in the way of his chicken. Then there's Pappy, P-A-P-I. Another clown and apparently the father of Poppy. He shows up in season two and acts as a bit of a mentor for Poppy and also challenges his violence with more violence. Though Pappy seems more in control of his emotions and skills compared to the unbridled bloodlust of his son. There are also a few other side characters such as Frog, Alien, and then the... <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this with a straight face. I can't. Guys, it's an elephant car. Like, it's a car with an elephant's head. That's the character. Ryuji also said, on the record, that Poppy has a sister named... I'm gonna screw this up, too. Marifa? Marifa. Marifa. Yeah, good enough. Look, that's official fan art that Ryuji did for her. Well, I guess it's not really fan art if it's official, so. But she was never in the show. The series itself embraces the zany nature of being a cartoon and doesn't have much in the way of continuity. Hell, I think Poppy has died like over 30 times out of the 40 episodes. Things just reset in the next episode as the chaos starts all over again. Speaking of chaos, I'm going to tell you all my favorite moments from the show. Brace yourselves. Poppy gets hit by a car. Poppy turns into a demon in order to haunt Kitomono, in order to practice his knife throwing. Poppy kills Kitomono and Kitomono's soul. Poppy gets into a Dragon Ball Z fight with his father as they throw the moon and the sun at each other. Kitomono deliberately drowns Poppy. Poppy and Pappy shave the skin off of a frog. Pappy fires a machine gun at Kitomono. Kitomono drags the bloody, impaled body of Poppy around, and then gets eaten by Poppy, and then gets impaled by Poppy, while Poppy impales himself. Poppy kills everyone, and then kills himself. Poppy gets poisoned, and would rather die than allow his father to suck it out. Poppy eats the skeleton of his friends. Poppy and his friends get bombed by World War II airplanes. Poppy fights God. And to wrap things up, Pappy puts Poppy into his stomach and pretends to be his pregnant mother. And folks, that is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to this show and its unbridled chaos. So, what are my overall thoughts about Poppy the Performer? Honestly, it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Let's start with the stories. Since each episode is around four to five minutes long, Ryuji and his team had to get their point across quickly. And that meant flooring it when it comes to insanity. Things escalate so quickly and at such an absurd pace that I can't help but laugh. The characters work so well in this setting, with Poppy being this malicious lunatic who only lives to torture and obliterate his friends for any reason he deems necessary. You look at Poppy wrong, <laughs> you better start running. Kitomono works well in this capacity, as he will usually try to avoid Poppy's wrath, but will also have a go at Poppy if the opportunity presents itself. It's fantastic chemistry, and I never get bored with it. Hell, they even introduce Pappy to add in another element to the series. Instead of having just Kitomono suffer all the time, you now have a character who can challenge and mess with Poppy, even though Kitomono still suffers from their battles. Also, Kitomono's mask concept, with his expressions and how the mask fall off from smile to frown to the next facial expression, brilliant. I love this so much. It is so clever. Also, the expressions remind me of Saitama from One Punch Man. This show is so over the top, so ridiculous, so utterly insane, and it works. I would compare this show to Tom and Jerry, another cartoon that is renowned for its slapstick and physical comedy. These two are at constant odds, as Tom fails to capture Jerry and usually gets wrecked in the process. The same somewhat applies to Poppy and his friends, though it's much more dark with its humor and extreme with how things escalate. That being said, I see similarities with each respective show. They both mostly rely on telling their stories through visuals and physical interactions. Like I said earlier in the video, Ryuji could not afford voice actors, 
So instead, he said, screw it. Let's just rely on visual storytelling and silly sound effects, which in my opinion, makes the show that much more unique. There were moments where I was crying laughing from the use of the music and the sound effects, like with the Mirage episode. The running up to the oasis and it just keeps scooting back with the sound effect. Chef's kiss, that was great. And the best part of all, it's universal. I don't speak a word of Japanese. I know, surprising, very, very surprising. Yet I understand this show crystal clear. And that's truly a testament to Poppy's impeccable physical comedy and visual storytelling. Oh, speaking of visuals, let's talk about the animation. When you first see Poppy, you probably think it's some low tier animation trash. Like some cartoon clip that plays at the bowling alley whenever you get a strike. I mean, yeah, the 3D animation is not high quality. With fluid animation and hyper detailed characters and lighting and backgrounds. But here's the thing, that's totally fine. When Ryuji was creating the show, he knew he couldn't afford complicated designs and quality. So he toned everything down. The focus should be on the chaotic and zany nature of the characters. And that's it. You're not here for Pixar level quality. You're here to watch an anthro wolf wearing orange shorts and a mask drag around the lifeless corpse of an impaled and bloody clown. That's why you're here. And guess what? You're gonna love it. Or else. The show knew what it wanted to be and it absolutely delivered. Madness. Violence absurd levels of ridiculous comedy that only a cartoon could do justice. All in all, perfection. Unless you're some mom on YouTube looking for a video to put on for your kids, and then you accidentally click on Poppy because, oh, look at the cute clown. Hey, you might regret that. American moms are like, what is this? What is on the screen? Ah, turn on Coco Melon. Get rid of the cursed clown. I mean, come on. That has to be the reason why there are so many dislikes on these videos. And let's be real, that only makes Poppy the performer that much more amazing. So in conclusion, Poppy the performer completely caught me off guard, but in a very good way. Going into it, I somewhat knew that the show was unorthodox and wasn't your typical kids cartoon, but I was not expecting it to go as hard as it did. It takes no prisoners and doesn't coddle viewers at all. Oh, what's that? You did not like the violence in the first episode? Well, that's too bad. We're gonna simultaneously impale our main characters now and then shoot them and then bury them cause screw you. Also, I wasn't expecting how much I would genuinely love this show. This cartoon is a testament to the drive and creativity of its team. How they took their limited budget and resources and then used those limitations to their advantage. Oh no, we can't afford voice actors. Screw it, we don't need them. We've got Poppy and Pappy and Kidomono. We'll be fine. See that face? Yeah, that face can carry the show. The characters are interesting and well-defined. The pacing is quick, but in a fun and rewarding way. And even the animation works in the show's favor. All in all, Poppy the Performer was created with care and love and is one hell of a good time. It's not for everybody, I know that. It is not for everybody, but it's definitely for me. I'm gonna put this one in my cursed but fun folder on my computer. Unlike this show. Yeah, the Jehovah's Witnesses cartoon. Ooh, you belong in the other folder. Whoa, hold on, not that one. So it's been over a month now since I got my Midnight Lux mattress in the mail from Helix. And the results? I love it. Such an upgrade for my old one. Legit, I've had the best sleep in my life since I got my Helix mattress. Helix is a premium mattress in a box company that makes mattresses to fit your unique needs based on your body type and sleep style. Do you sleep on your side, on your stomach, on your back? Do you prefer to have a firm mattress or one that is squishy? Helix can help you find a mattress that best suits you. Just hop onto their website, take their sleep quiz, and get matched with a mattress that is perfect for your unique body type and sleep preferences. Oh, you share a bed with a partner? Well, have them take the quiz with you so you can both find a perfect compromise. 
Like I said, I got my Helix Midnight Lux about a month ago, and I'm incredibly happy with that choice. I took the sleep quiz and entered in my preferences. For example, I sleep on my side. I also prefer to have a mattress that is soft, but has some firmness to it too. On top of that, I have my old dog, Lammy, who likes to crash in my bed at night, so you better believe I got a queen size option. The comfort levels of the Midnight Lux blows my old mattress out of the water. It's not even a contest. Whenever my head hits the pillow, I'm out in like 10 minutes. Also, I still can't get over how this mattress was mailed to my front door for free. When it first arrived, I was like, wait, my mattress can fit in that box? And then I proceeded to open it, and poof, there it was. Uh, a word of advice, uh, open the box in a room that is empty if you can, so that way it can expand and breathe. As you can see, I forgot to do that. And if you're hesitant about buying a Helix you haven't been able to try, no worries. There's a 100 night sleep trial, so you have over three months to try out your selection and make sure that you love it. If you don't, Helix will come pick up the mattress and you will get a full refund. So I genuinely recommend Helix Sleep. I'm a very happy customer and I think owning a quality mattress is important, especially one that can be literally mailed to your front door. So if you're in the market looking for a new bed, check out Helix. Click the link down below or go to helixsleep.com slash saberspark and get up to $200 off your Helix mattress. Heck, they even toss in two pillows for free.